All right, welcome back. Yes, indeed, the Alaulu Akode joins us next. Good morning, and thank you for coming on today. Good morning. Uh, you know, we started out, we talked about the budgeting system, we talked about the scenarios in terms of how government delegation went and back, and several people trying to connect the dots as to whether or not government really is about the people, if they feel the pulse of the people, or is there a cocoon up there when you get in there, you just have to you know, be in that bubble. So several questions always, mm. and most times it comes across as though it's us and them. So they say, tighten your belt, but you look to different things. Again, politics is in the burn at this time. Right. Uh, so we'll connect that to what's going on in Ondo State. Right. We've seen a lot of back and forth there. And many, nearly will think, look, it should be straightforward. But it turns out there appears to be a lot more going on in Ondose than people are actually seeing in terms of who wants to hold on to it. We know the governor is indisposed, the deputy uh, angling to run the affairs of states, but seven, several, several other interests there I just think that, no, it might not be exactly that way. So from your perspective about what's going on right. in Ondose, State, what can you tell us? Right. Well, I mean, that's a, a, a very uh, important uh, development uh, basically, I, I think that uh, what, 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 what is the most important factor that should guide uh, this is, is the public interest. So governance in Ondo State has to be, you know, uh, obviously activated uh, properly. I mean, the, 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 there, there ought to be uh, a clear structure of who is in charge in Ondo State. And I think... Uh, for me, that is the most important thing. So the, the governor apparently uh, is incapacitated. You know, I think he's, uh, uh, he's, he's, he's been out of the country for a, a number of times, and then, you know, uh, he's back in the Badon trying to convalesce and, you know, trying to see what he can do. Um, so that is the overriding interest. Now, I won't say that. I think. Uh, many of the, uh, uh, the, the commentaries that I have, or some of the commentaries that I have followed, doesn't seem to also give the governor some credit. Uh, I mean, this guy has handed over power at least four times this year. You know, and so, so, so we're not dealing with the situation of somebody who is trying to hang on to power desperately. But, but that is impression that is being created now. That's, that, that, and, and, and that's the point, you know. Uh, and, and, and that's why I said, look, yes, it is important. You know, you, you can't have a situation where you have a deputy governor uh, who doesn't have the authority if the governor is not available. That is non-negotiable. Okay? If the governor is not there, the constitution says that the deputy governor should take over. But this guy, uh, Governor Akeridolu, you know, has handed over power four times this year to the guy. Okay? So what I suspect is happening in those state is politics. You know, and I'm not saying that, you know, uh, uh, they should have a situation where there is this, uh, you don't know what is happening, you know, that has to be sorted out. But I think credit ought to go to Akredolu. Now, if, if you look at Akredolu very well, this is a guy that is very courageous. You're not going to find many politicians that are bold as Akredolu. This was the guy when we were talking about, you know, whether power was going to shift to south and people started to prefer to stay in the north. He said, no, look, it's going to be north and south. Very bold. He comes out and says he's at his seat. And in this particular case, he has handed over power four times to the, to the deputy governor. So what should happen now is that he should hand over power if he is not in place to run the government. But we should not have a situation where, based on report, we have, you have party leaders mm. giving... Uh, instructions is to, 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 to the state assembly and to the security as to what is going to happen, which was what the president talked last week. Remember the president had a meeting, uh, I think about two Fridays ago, yeah. when he brought all the stakeholders uh, uh -huh. together. We have information reported in the media yeah. that what had happened was that you had party leaders going to Ondo State and trying to determine with some people what ought to happen, giving instructions to security of, of, of party parties. leaders? Yeah. Was it on the direction of the president? That was why the president stopped it. Because the president said, yeah, you, you can't do that. They were doing that behind the president's back. I imagine. And this, 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 this was what it was in the report, in the, in, in the newspaper report. Quest Times reported it, leadership reported it. So, so my point is that you must have a situation where everybody is carried along, which was what the president tried to do. He said, look, if this guy is not available, then, you know, he should hand over power. But don't try to do it in such a way that doesn't carry him along. He's still alive. 
we don't have conclusive so, information whether he's incapacitated. There are insinuations that he is, okay? But there's a, there, there, there's a constitutional requirement. If somebody is going to be declared incapacitated, it has to start with a resolution from the executive. So clearly, the state, which is going to happen. So clearly, there's, there's power play in the sense that, that is what is happening. In some states. groups high up there are against the governor, and so the same party, and they then yeah. mobilize certain people. As you said, they went to the state yeah. to try and see what they can do with the deputy governor. But I'm also wondering here now, if the governor has handed over four times, has the deputy governor also shown himself to douse all of this tension? In a sense, probably coming up and, and then saying, look, he's handed over to me not once, not twice, but a number of times. Yeah. So there really isn't all this hoopla in the media about him not wanting to hand over or him holding tight as, mm. as though he sit tight is unwarranted. Have you heard any such commentary from the gov from deputy governor? Well, so, so I, I, I think that is what the president, and we must give the president uh, kudos for this. That is what the president is trying to sort out and say, look, this is a political problem. We, 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 it's not a constitutional crisis yet. That's why he brought everybody and said, that, look, what we are going to do is that everybody goes back to status quo. The governor is still the governor. The deputy governor is the, is the deputy governor. If the governor is not around, the deputy governor, you know, manages things. And you see that after that, the deputy governor presided over uh, the, uh, a state escrow. So, so, so this is the point. The, the president is trying to say that, look, it, it, this can be done in a way that carries everybody along. He's trying to resolve what is clearly a political crisis in so, those states. Is it that some people didn't want to even, they didn't bounce it off the president? They just wanted to have their way no matter what happens? Well, you know, I mean, don't, don't, don't let me, uh, we, we, we have the reports, you know, there. And the, the paper the, mentioned the name and, of the and, party and, chairman. Yeah, and it's not been, uh, it's, it's not been denied, you know, and, and I, I, I am told Wait, on good authority that yeah. the president was himself alarmed that you have party officials giving instructions to security agencies to go and, uh, the, the, I, mean, to, I mean, giving them instructions on what to do, essentially. It's well, not a duty well, of the party so leader to give instructions to, mean, to, to, to security. As it's reported, that means the, 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 can the party chairman be going against the president? Well, I don't know whether it, it went against the president, but I understand that when the president found out, the president had to put a stop to it and say that, no, I mean, you, you can't do that. Wow. You know, which was why he called the meeting on the, on, on the Friday and tried to bring everybody together. The point is that what is happening in those states is a political crisis. And I think that people have been unfair to Akele Dolu. Akele Dolu is, is somebody that stands up for what he believes in. He's, 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 he's a man of courage. Now, the man is sick. But now, you have a situation where oh, he's not handed over power. This year, he has handed over power four times. Four times. You must give the man credit. But there is a political problem. So people think that they... The deputy governor, uh, you know, has fallen out, so and they want so to get him out, and you know, so that is what has to be. Is there about falling out? Is there, is there an issue between the governor and the deputy governor? I don't know. I don't know. What, what, what I'm saying is that clearly, clearly, what you have is you have some people who don't want the deputy governor to. Basically so in fact, what, what we hear out. and speak to this if he's right, because some say, look, this deputy governor was speaking about. He wasn't there from the get go. It was not the first deputy governor that yeah, was there. Yeah. He came on board much later. Second time. And then you have people who will say, ah, wait a minute, if we've been here all the while, you just came in, and then is it because maybe the governor is indisposed, you now want to strand, grab the reign of affairs in the past. It doesn't work that way. Whether you're deputy governor or not, you have to join the queue. So some loyalists to the governor may also be thinking, wait a minute, if the governor is not disposed to him, you cannot grab this by force. And maybe party leaders are now thinking, no, let him take it. So probably that might explain this friction. Well, but the, 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 the truth of the matter is that he's the deputy governor. So if the governor is total, and whether you like him or not. No, actually, I'm talking about because there's election coming up. That's why this yeah, drama I, I, is this I, I huge. I think so. Election is coming up in less than one year, actually. So, so you, might, you, you might be right. But the point is that for now, right now, he is the deputy governor. You know, so if the governor is incapacitated, and this is my point, this has to be done properly. If the governor is incapacitated, the question says that the executive council ought to make that resolution. Who would set up that, who would call for that executive council meeting? That well, well, that well meeting? last week, after the meeting with the president, there was an executive council meeting presided over by the deputy governor. So, so, so do, even you, do you think in that kind of meeting, the deputy governor would dare, and I choose that carefully, would dare say, let's assess the health status of the governor as to determine whether he's 
incapacitated or not? Do you think well, he well, I, 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 I mean, I, following all the things that happened before that yeah, meeting? I, I don't know, and I, I don't want to delve into that uh, uh, <laughs> speculation <laughs> because I'm not, I'm not a yeah, politician. Because, I, I, what, 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 my, my, my concern here is that yeah. there have been a lot of claims that the governor is incapacitated. Okay? There must be some people that will be able to determine that. The president, I imagine, so, should so, know. So there are should... people who must have the information properly, and this thing should be done properly. If it's so then there should be a... then there should be an executive council resolution to make that clear but so that power can proceed. That's where the, the issue will yeah, be. Mr. Conde, both of us know that that executive council decision, that's what we're talking about here, may never happen. Mm -hmm. So does it not imply that we need to go back to the Constitution to the National Assembly and see how that can be amended to determine or to set up an independent body, so to speak, that would, on the outside, look in. Independent body? Well, you know, I, I, I mean, mean, I think that would be wait, extrajudicial. No, 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 I mean, from the Constitution. <laughs> but you, we, do you think there would ever be that kind of situation? Well, I, I think that there are quite a lot of things in our Constitution that needs to be uh, looked at again. And, and you know, there's no, uh, is, this could be one of the things that you want to uh, look at in terms of you know, what happens when the president is away. We have a quite, uh, you know, uh, 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 a lot of situations where the president traveled, you know, and uh, handed over power, you know, the times when he traveled, he didn't hand over power, you know. Uh, and so, so you have all those kind of, uh, you know, situations that it's not very quite clear what's going to happen. So I think, yes, uh, a, 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 a clearer right. uh, picture can be set in the review yeah. of the Constitution. Yes, there are very, very many questions on this one, but I'm going to go to Lagos because it's just, <laughs> just coming in here yeah, as you speak. Well. Yeah. Let's go to Ayo Ambuki. Uh, Mr. Akonde, one of the things that I find quite interesting in all the conversations that we are having here is uh, something that you mentioned that, you know, some things, it seems like some things came to the president by surprise. And it only goes to... Uh, raise the issue of how people in the corridors of power take advantage of the privileges that they have of being uh, around the corridors of power. Um, the story, part of the story goes that some people, some elements around, you know, the presidency uh, had the audacity to invite security agencies to, uh, in the name of the president, uh, get some things done in Ondo State. Uh, you have served with the president, the vice president before in the president's office. So you probably have an idea of how these things work and how they should be curtailed because it is taking undue advantage of the privileges that are theirs but not authority to summon security agencies. And get that clear. Well, you know, so, so, so you, 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 are, you, are, you are right. It is uh, uh, certainly an undue advantage uh, uh, to do that. And I, I, I'm not really, uh, I don't think it is uh, uh, a new thing. I think because of the informality of, of the demonstration of power in Nigeria's political history, you find a lot of the people in the corridor, uh, you know, uh, swaying many uh, you know, uh, uh, or, or swaying power, you know, informally. So, so I, 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 I'm not sure that it is unusual, but it is not right. It is not right. People are elected and appointed and, and given specific authority. But a lot of the times, or some of the times, you find people around them using the authority. It's not new. But the point is that it's not the right thing to do. And to the credit of the president, when he heard about these particular instances, he gave instructions to the security agencies to stand down. The issue here, then, Mr. Course, Mr. He Conde, about a political yeah, my apologies. The issue here is that if the president hadn't decided to go to Ondo State, those security agencies could have been used to compel something untoward and unconstitutional to happen, simply because they have the privilege. So how do we curtail that kind of thing? That's the issue here, because if the president hadn't heard about it and dealt with it decisively the way he did, something we will not be talking about the same things we are talking about now. Yeah, yeah, and I, 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 and I think that there, there, there are quite a number of other 
underlining issues, you know, which are essentially speculative, but is the nature of, uh, uh, of, of politics. You know, there are those, and this is theory, there are those who, who say that Akiri Dulu is being targeted by some of those uh, 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 party interests because of his uh, pro-Southwest views of the past. You remember that uh, when uh, there was a lot of insecurity in the Southwest, Akiri Dulu was the one that rallied, you know, all the other governors to start the, uh, the, the Southwest uh, uh, regional security outfit. I, I, I think, you know, you know following this, uh, that theory, I think he had quite a few enemies because of that, you know, uh, like I said, th th these are speculative. But these are some of the underlying currents that might explain some of the, uh, the extent to which some of the party leaders have gone uh, in trying to, uh, to solve the problem. I don't think it is an a entirely bad thing to try to bring a political solution, but to have gone to the extent of issuing out of, uh, instructions uh, without proper... Uh, 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 proper legitimate authority. I, I, I think that is that is what is a problem here. And you know, we must we must we must commend the fact that this was uh, sufficiently uh, terminated uh, before too long. Well, I, I, I doubt that the matter has been resolved sufficiently, Mr. Kondi, uh, because th there's so many ways to look at this. Um, the president had intervened, and we thought that you know that would. Um, resolve the Ondo political impasse, you know, and we heard that even the impeachment notice on the uh, deputy governor had been withdrawn. But here we are back again having the same, this same conversation uh, about who really is in charge in Ondo state. You know, for me, the more um, important point is that the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria the commander-in-chief of the armed forces, had intervened and made some recommendations and we're still here. What are the lessons that we really should learn from this, Mr. Akonde? Because, you know, back in time at the onset of democracy in this country, the commander-in-chief of the armed forces wielded more authority over the affairs of uh, states. Well, you know, I, I think the lessons uh, to, to learn here are essentially uh, to, 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 to see the difference between what is a political crisis and what is a legal crisis. I don't think that Ondo State has got into what is a constitutional crisis, really. But there is a political crisis. There are people, just like Chamberlain uh, noted, there are people who don't like the deputy governor who don't want him to possibly uh, be the next candidate, and they felt that if he were to get the powers uh, of acting governor now, that might lead to him uh, getting the, the, the slot. But my position is that, look, he is the deputy governor, you know, and so we have to follow the due process. And, and, and if the governor is indeed incapacitated, there is, a, there, there, there is an outline in the Constitution of how this ought to happen. And while it is all right, indeed, for political leaders to try and work out a political solution, it is important to also know the limits of a political party or political leaders and what the duties of government officials are. You know, I will just give a title in the name of the president. Sounds like a title of a good book that one can write. Or a movie. You can adapt to a blockbuster movie. That's right. <laughs> Fantastic one. Right. I can't pay him for patents. He's in patent. <laughs> so we we'll have to thank you for coming on. Uh, Lalo Akonde, former... Thank presidential you. aid. And as a matter of fact, lessons here is that some of the things that they say the president signed off on, you need to check and double check. Yeah. Imagine if they couldn't access the president, what could have happened? I mean, look, look, look at what happened on the, on the yacht. The man said that he knew nothing about the yacht. <laughs> and everybody was going all over the place that he wanted the yacht. Okay, so another story is how do these things happen? With us? That will be the next chapter. But let's take a look at some messages before we go as quick as we can. This one is coming from Professor Emmanuel Okwebo, who says... Instead of wasting taxpayers' money on the over 400 delegates to the just-concluded COP28 conference, Nigerian government, especially the Ministry of Environment, should focus more on our peculiar environmental challenges. Is the government of the day aware that the quality and quantity of life in Nigeria is about the lowest in the world? Are they aware that the average life expectancy of Nigeria is about 55 years are they also aware that the 
that the very high level of morbidity and mortality in Nigeria are driven largely by environmental pollution challenges, mainly indoor and outdoor air pollution, and not necessarily climate change. Nigeria, as a nation, must order its priority correctly to enhance our life, our quality, and quantity. And Professor Monica Enakin, I say, as the state of California, fiscal budget for 2024 is $310 billion, which is equivalent to 10 years of Nigeria's budget. Our budget still dependent on the value of crude in the international market. Our refineries still maribund, while the state of Texas has over 32 refineries out of 126 in the USA. Our capital expenditure and loan repayment suck 80% of our $33 billion budget. Lack of power drives up cost of production and prices of goods and services, causing galloping inflation and stifling our SMEs, which is the economic hub of any developed or developing economy. That's Professor Inakena. Mm, so much to unpack from there. And this one is from Festus Akimboyewa. He says, NAS must ask the executive why we have to borrow about 8 trillion naira to finance the 2024 budget when the same government had removed oil subsidy and ended our two-tier exchange rates. NAS must also ensure that any borrowing is spent on developing our infrastructure, supporting vulnerable businesses, and keeping people in work. Any bogus and fraudulent spending identified in the budget must be removed. And that's our show this morning. Thank you for the privilege of being a part of your morning. I'm Ayo Makinde. Have a wonderful day. Thank you for watching. I am Bukola Koka. And thank you for watching. I'm Neota Igbe. We'll see you next time. I'm Trey Bellin, so goodbye.